Hello everyone, I'm Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist. Today I just wanted to introduce you to some of the new uh, animation effects that are possible now with uh, Captivate 5. And uh, I thought it would be nice to start out by just showing you uh, how we'll finish up with this project. So quick like uh, file and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, preview this project. We'll take a look at it. So you can see here that we have a, a bit of animation going on. And now let's take a look at how that animation all comes together. Uh, so basically, one of the great new features, of course, is that we have the ability now to have multiple documents open at the same time. So I'm going to switch between this finished one and one that's not quite finished so that I can show you how these uh, objects are all put together in a way uh, using the new effects uh, features. Uh, so first thing is to note that down here along the bottom I have my timeline, just as I normally would, and you can see that I have a series of highlight boxes, and those highlight boxes are obviously forming the pieces that are getting animated. Uh, each of those animations is referring to something called an effect, okay? Now, effects can actually be one of two things. They can be like a drop shadow or a glow. They can be filters, essentially. So if I were to look up here, I can see under color effects, that have the same kinds of color effects that would exist if you're familiar with flash. Um, likewise, I could have a bevel filter or a blur filter or a drop shadow, a glow, and so on. So any one of those effects can be applied at any point as well. Now by default, when an effect is applied, it's applied to the timeline, to the, the automated timeline that exists for that particular object. We'll see later how you can actually apply it based on a trigger. So, for example, if you wanted to have a button that you pressed to cause the effect to begin, you can actually do that kind of a thing as well. So for now, we'll take a look at these, and we can see that each one of these has a different effect applied to them. So uh, this one has fly in from bottom left, for example. This one has fly in from the left, and so forth. But this one over here doesn't have that effect applied. So let's take a look at how we actually apply a, an effect to any object that's on the Captivate stage area. We're going to come down here to the Effects tab and choose the FX button. And then here, I can choose from any of the pre-created effects or, and this is really cool, I can browse for an effect that I created myself. Okay. Now, the effects that you create yourself, you can create just by exporting Flash animation. So if you use Flash Professional CS5 and you export animation XML from Flash, so you, just, you have an animated sequence on your timeline in Flash, and then you choose the command option to export that as animation XML, then you'll get this kind of a result. I actually hand edited these files based on a single file. So you can also go in and open the, the XML files in Dreamweaver uh, and, and edit them yourself. So if you have the eLearning suite, for example, you could use Flash and you could use Dreamweaver to manipulate these in any way you want. Now this is the top right, so I'm going to choose Fly In from Top Right. That's the animation I'm looking for. And it's an XML file and I'll just say, okay, let's go ahead and do it. What's really cool, of course, is that you can expand the animations that are provided out of the box with Captivate by adding any animation that you can create in Flash and then export as an XML. So now I've applied that animation, and that's really all there is to that step. You can see that all the others have their animation applied. You're just repeating the application of the animation. These are all going to be triggered on the event. You can see I have two slides. I have one slide, which is my fly... Uh, my fly... Uh, ins, and then I have a second slide uh, which has my fly outs. And you can see each of those are fly outs. So I'm going to go from the first slide where everything flies in to the second slide where everything flies out and all I had to do to apply those animations is to apply them like that. We'll just test it quick like to make sure it's working. Uh, we'll do a file, and preview, and a project, and away it goes. And you can see my animations are all flying in now and flying out. So we did a good job. We got that last upper right hand corner one working effectively. Very simple to apply these kind of animations uh, and to manipulate them, to work with them, even to create your own custom animations, uh, and even to create uh, animations which have uh, specific properties. So you'll also notice over here there's an amount of blur. Blur X equals this value. That's how many pixels of blur are going to occur on each one. And I included a default value for the blur on each of these. 
which is 17. If I increase that blur, it would be more blurry when it comes out. If I decrease it, it would be less blurry, so it would be sharper as it comes in. So when you watch that animation, of course, you know that it goes uh, a little bit blurry or a little bit not. Now let's just take another quick look at another uh, example of this. Uh, I'm going to open my recent files, and in here I have animation effects sample. Okay, And here we have an example of another highlight box, and in this case, I want to apply something to that highlight box, but I don't want to apply the effect necessarily uh, right out of the gate. I don't want the, the effect to run automatically. Instead, I want the effect to run when a button is actually triggering the effect. So if I click here on the highlight box, I'll see that this button, button one on success, is actually registered as a possible. And the way that that happened is this way. I went to the properties inspector, and inside the properties inspector, of course, we have the action button, right? Uh, while the button is selected, right? So button selected, properties, here we have the actions for that piece. And you can see on success, instead of continue, I've selected apply effect, right? So now once apply effect is selected, you'll automatically get an option to choose which object you want to apply the effect to. And so see here I've chosen highlight box one. That's of course because there's only one option on the screen at this time. If there were more objects there, there would be more choices for you. Once you've chosen that, now you've given uh, Captivate the information it needs to be able to provide this additional timeline in the effects of the highlight box. So the highlight box originally will only have its automated self-timed option. But once you've given it that additional step in the property inspector, you've given it a second timeline, the button timeline, right? So now the button timeline exists and I can go to the button timeline for the highlight box and see that there's an effect applied here, which is the blast effect. And you can see the blast effect has uh, some properties that I can have. I can ease it in, I can ease it out, and so on. Um, and let's take a look at the, this total piece uh, in, in, uh, in practice now. So I'm going to preview my project. And when I preview my project, we'll see that it goes forward, and yet none of the animation happened, right? But if I push the button, now, because it's a trigger-based animation, I'll push that button, and it runs our effect. So all I have to do is push the button, and it runs our effect. Pretty cool. Some of the great new features that exist uh, in Captivate 5. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you stay tuned uh, as we bring you many, many more of the great new